Looking for the best X870 motherboard? After extensive research and testing, I picked the five best X870 motherboards for different types of users based on VRM design, features, value, and aesthetics. These motherboards aren't ranked in any specific order, so be sure to watch until the end to find the one that's best for you. So let's get started. Current prices and all motherboards mentioned in the video are available in the description. First, we have the best x870 motherboard for creators, MSI MAG x870 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. If your build is aimed at content creation, heavy multitasking, or professional workloads, the MSI MAG x870 Tomahawk Wi-Fi has you covered. It's packed with creator-focused connectivity, including USB 4 Type-C, optional dual USB-C Gen 2, triple USB-A Gen 1 and Gen 2, Wi-Fi 7, and Realtek 5 Gigabit LAN, all in one rear I.O. cluster. That's enough bandwidth to connect external storage bays, Thunderbolt docks, livestream mixers, and more without needing to invest in a separate USB hub. The Tomahawk comes with a 14 plus 2 plus 1 duet rail power system featuring 80 amp SPS and large frozer heatsinks, allowing you to overclock your Ryzen 9000 series processors without worry. It also supports dual-channel DDR5 up to 8400 megatransfers per second, overclocked, PCIe 5.0 by 16 for GPUs, and two PCIe Gen 5 M2 SSD slots. All in all, the MSI MAG X870 Tomahawk Wi-Fi stands out as my main pick for creators because it covers all the essentials without a premium pricing. Whether it's editing, multitasking, or handling large files, the Tomahawk gets the fundamentals right. However, for users with more specific workload demands, there are a few strong alternatives worth considering. For creators handling real-time 3D rendering, animation, or other high-intensity CPU workloads, the MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi might be a better fit than the Tomahawk. It features a more robust 18-phase VRM design with 110 amp power stages, offering significantly better thermal headroom during sustained all-core rendering sessions. On the other hand, for video Video editors working with massive raw footage, the Gigabyte X870E RS Master comes with three PCIe Gen 5 M2 slots with fewer lane sharing compromises and an onboard 5 gigabit Ethernet LAN port, which can be a real time saver for transferring large files to network drives or NAS setups. To sum up, what I like on the MSI MAG X870 Tomahawk Wi-Fi is the excellent overclocking opportunities, the screwless M2 Shield Frozer implementation, and the impressive connectivity options. On the downside, there is not enough room for SATA storage. Next, if you're building a small form factor PC, Asus ROG Strix X870i Gaming Wi-Fi is the best mini ITX X870 board. This is one of the few Mini-ITX X870 boards currently available. Due to its Mini-ITX form factor and the lack of competition, you're paying a premium, but that doesn't mean it's not mighty. In fact, during testing, the board performed well, with its 10-phase 110 amp power stages peaking at just 52 degrees Celsius and also passing the DDR5-8000 Expo test. The VRM power phase configuration at 10 plus 2 plus 1 is slightly weaker than most ATX X870 boards, but this board isn't specifically geared towards overclocking. USB support is somewhat limited considering the price. The rear I.O. panel features 10 ports, but three of them are USB 2.0, while the remaining seven are USB 3.2 Gen 2 or better, offering decent high-speed connectivity. Because of its small form factor, RAM capacity is capped at 96 gigabytes, but it can be overclocked to 8,400 megatransfers per second, which is great to see. For networking, you have the option to use either the 2.5 gigabit LAN port or Wi-Fi 7 for a wireless setup. That being said, this board's standout feature is also its most apparent weakness, as its size limits its capabilities compared to traditional ATX motherboards with more headers, ports, and expansion slots. If you're aiming for a compact mini ITX build, you'll have to make some sacrifices, including fewer RAM DIMMs, PCIe slots, and internal connections. However, Asus has done a good job of addressing these limitations by including the ROG Strix Hive 2 and FPS card add-ons. 
To sum up, what I like is the high-speed networking support, and it includes add-ons to expand functionality. On the downside, fewer slots and internal ports than traditional ATX boards, limited overclocking capability, and it's expensive. Next, we have the best budget entry point into the new AM5 platform, the Gigabyte X870 Eagle Wi-Fi 7. This is an excellent choice for anyone working with a tighter budget, but not willing to compromise on the core x870 features that actually matter. You're still getting a solid 14-phase power delivery setup with 60-amp power stages for the V-Core, full support for PCIe Gen 5 storage, DDR5 overclocking, 2.5 gigabit LAN, and Wi-Fi 7, which is a rare sight at this price point. If you're a first-time builder, you'll love it, thanks to Gigabyte's emphasis on DIY friendliness. Features like their easy latch design for PCIe and M2 slots, a pre-mounted I.O. shield, and a Q-Flash auto-scan BIOS make installation hassle-free. There's also plenty of storage options with three M2 slots, including one PCIe 5.0x4 and several SATA ports as well. Still, it isn't flawless. The primary PCIe 5.0 M2 heatsink sits so close to the GPU that it can pick up exhaust heat. For those who want high-speed storage, future-proof I.O., Wi-Fi 7, and flexible connectivity in a budget-conscious, DIY-friendly package, the Eagle Wi-Fi 7 is a solid pick. However, if your priority leans more towards a workstation-style setup with proven stability, the MSI Pro X870P Wi-Fi is worth considering. Its reliable tuning features, consistent memory support, and stable BIOS make it ideal for long-term productivity builds where next-gen wireless or full-gen 5 lane saturation isn't a priority. It generally lands in the same price bracket as the Eagle, so the choice here comes down to whether you prioritize next-gen features or long-term stability. To sum up, what I like is the reliable 14-phase power delivery, the strong wireless support via Wi-Fi 7, and full Gen 5 GPU and SSD compatibility. On the downside, the aesthetics are pretty plain, and the thermal layout around the primary M2. Stepping things up to the big guns, the MSI MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi is my suggestion for the best high-end X870E motherboard. It brings premium-grade everything, from a high-end 18 plus 2 plus 1 VRM design and impressive memory support up to DDR5 8400 overclocked, to robust heatsinks, dual PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slots, USB 4, and Wi-Fi. This motherboard has everything ready, even for the most power-hungry 9000 series CPUs. One thing that sets this motherboard apart from others are the handy DIY features it comes with like the smart button for multiple hardware controls, AI boost technology that allows one-click overclocking, a screwless M2 Shield Frozer system, and MSI's BIOS and software suite, which continues to be among the most beginner-friendly while still giving enthusiasts full control. You also get enough connectivity options, with 13 rear and 9 front USB ports, most of them being USB 3, along with two USB 4 ports. When it comes to the competition, there are options like the Gigabyte X870E RS Master and Asus ROG Strix X870E-E Gaming Wi-Fi. In terms of core specs, such as power delivery, PCIe 5.0 support, and networking, they're quite similar. Where the carbon pulls ahead is USB connectivity, with even its slowest rear I.O. port running at 10 gigabits per second. This is ideal for users relying on fast external storage. On the other hand, the RS Master leans more towards thermal performance, and it's worth a look if you want something with a more workstation-grade focus. As for the ROG Strix, it's the better pick if you're into gamer aesthetics, aggressive design elements, and ROG-exclusive features. To sum up, what I like on the Carbon Wi-Fi board is the smart button functionality, the handy DIY-friendly features, and there are lots of connectivity options. On the downside, RGB design may be too flashy for some. Finally, my top choice is the Asus ROG Strix X870A Gaming Wi-Fi. This motherboard stands out as the most balanced choice for the majority of PC builders. It's not trying to be a hardcore overclocking board or a stripped-down budget model. 
Instead, it's well-rounded in all areas, whether that means having robust VRM cooling that can handle high-end chips like the Ryzen 9 9950X3D, or being well-equipped connectivity-wise, offering a single Gen 5 by 16 graphics card slot, two Gen 5 M2 SSD slots, and three Gen 4 SSD slots. And it's not just the top choice, but also the best white x870 motherboard, thanks to its striking white PCB that brings a fresh and modern aesthetic to almost any system build. The matching metallic heatsinks enhance its clean, crisp look, while the subtle RGB lighting on the I.O. shroud gives you the flexibility to keep things sleek and understated, or go for a more bold, luminous setup. On the I.O. panel, you'll find 12 USB ports, with the slowest being USB 3.2 Gen 1. While that's generally a good thing, it also means that if your peripherals still rely on USB 2.0, you might end up spending a bit more to upgrade those as well. Audio is slightly more limited, but seeing optical SP diff alongside the basic in and out 3.5mm jacks is a nice touch. If you're looking at alternatives in the same category, the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Elite AX is worth considering. It competes closely on specs with the Strix X870, also offering a robust 16-phase power delivery system, PCIe 5.0 support, and Wi-Fi 7. Gigabyte's DIY-friendly touches, such as easy latch slots, a debug zone, and a tuner-friendly BIOS, earn it extra points from first-time builders and manual overclockers. For most gamers and creators, though, the ROG Strix X870A will be the go-to for its future-proof connectivity, AI-powered tuning, and premium aesthetics. However, for those who value hands-on tweaking, appreciate build convenience, and want great performance without giving up customization, the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Elite AX is a compelling alternative. To sum up, what I like is the great VRM performance, the rear I.O. selection, and the gorgeous white design. On the downside, it's expensive, and there's no dual Gen 5x16 slots. So what do you think? Which of these is the best X870 motherboard for you? Or do you think another motherboard is better? Tell us in the comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and check more videos filled with suggestions and reviews. Have an awesome day.